shit far. Okay. I'm just going to do my makeup and try to shake off the hellish fucking PC issues that have plagued my existence these last six fucking months. I've wiped my PC completely twice since I got it. And it's a year and a half old. Approaching two. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. This is what fine looks like. I'm going to watch this documentary. Yeah, this this is project is way more important than a single person. I'd say more important even than the human race. In the spring of 2013, a channel titled Living on Light appeared on YouTube. Throughout its three-month-long window of activity, a Seattle woman who went by the name Navina Shine regularly uploaded video diaries detailing the progress of an experiment she was conducting on herself. My name is Navina Shine. I am both the founder of Living on Light I speak, girl. and I am the subject in the Everything first of our experiments. Done. Navina's goal was simple. She wished to prove that a human being could survive without eating. So in this Living on Light experiment, we want to demonstrate that it's possible for a human being to thrive without the need to ingest food into the physical body. Instead, Navina would attempt to transition her body to use light as its only source of nutrition, a, a potential she believed like, oh, everyone possessed if they could only find a way to unlock it. If Navina could prove such a lifestyle was possible, she predicted that people the world over would begin to adopt it, ushering in a foodless utopia with an end to hunger and a return to symbiosis with the natural world. If it's actually true that humans do not have to eat food, It'll change everything we know about ourselves and our planet. I forgot to get it'll a It'll change the consciousness ear. of humanity, and it will change God everything really, really we do in our world. <laughs> Navina's really beliefs funny. about the human body were nothing new. By her own admission, Living on Light was largely based on the similar claims throughout the decades of people absorbing nourishment through air and light, with methods such as pranic breathing and sun gazing cited as replacements for eating and drinking. Named after the claim that they need only breathe in the nutrients needed to survive, they call themselves the Breatharians. I don't take any Breatharian is a good name for I'm a, a Mass I Effect have been alien race. For 19 years. Oh, Breatharians? They're the ones that have to wear the fucking spacesuits because they can't breathe oxygen good or whatever. Hi, Panda! Oh, my vision is so fucked. And we can treat our planet entirely differently. We can treat our lives entirely differently when we know that we don't have to eat. Navina was no doubt familiar with the controversial history This is about a cult that tries to trick you into not eating. And the and several so-called Breatharian gurus who had experienced brief celebrity within the fringes of the modern New Age now. movement, later to have been exposed as lying about their I lifestyle. I can't put my mic in a good spot. Notable examples include Hira okay. Ratan Manek, an Indian spiritualist who claimed to have not eaten for over a my decade, bangs are so instead long. staring into the sun as a method of maintaining vital functions, who was photographed at a like restaurant the in 2011. But new Navina was undeterred Ranger. by such reputational blemishes. For and by her, new Blue Power Ranger, living I mean, on light was an answer to If it was 1997, I'd be getting I the see call back. As being called to create this experiment and bring this vastly important. I look like every shitty Many boyfriend from every cheerful, 90s sincere teen disposition dramedy. as impressionable to the point of being delusional. Look, her experiment was edges, met with overwhelming like discouragement. My family's with the poor. comment sections we got filled with reminders yard. of the yeah, obvious dangers the of such an undertaking. But where sure. most viewers also, of Living on Light saw a woman ensnared in esoteric women mysticism, supporting women, but not Navina shitty saw herself as on the cusp of groundbreaking Anyways, it's enlightenment, super cool that a lot of tears got referring to Breatharianism as the greatest discovery the human race has ever made. I just so on May 3rd of 2013, 65-year-old Navina Shine ate what she believed <laughs> might be her last <laughs> meal and began her process of living on light. All the people who do this, who say they do this, and there's thousands of them who say this. She sounds like Mary Poppins, and it's really upsetting to me. I mean, I can't think that. 
specifically, how long did you That many people eating? can't possibly be lying. That's just silly. For me, on and off, uh, well, pretty well just on water and tea for two years. The name of Navina Shine's experiment was likely taken from a self-advertised spiritual guru who came to prominence in the late 1990s. An Australian woman named Ellen Grieve, more commonly known as Jasmine Heen, published a book titled Living on Light, which detailed a 21-day process of transitioning into a lifestyle which no longer required food. Instead, Jasmine Heen claimed nourishment would be provided by prana, a Sanskrit word meaning breath or life force. Where Don't are they teach getting white women Sanskrit. This from is what happens. They're not getting it from food. <coughs> The chi, the universal life force, or what we call prana, or if you're a religious person, you would say you are fed by the light of God, and obviously that's very hard to measure. Jasmine Heen she stated to have acclimated this lifestyle years ago, but still ate occasionally when the urge to experience a particular taste arose. You know, when she felt like it. Free from the need to take any nourishment. If you saw me eat, it's only because I felt like it, not because I needed that to. That doesn't mean that I've had 11 years of taking nothing, but in that time, yeah, I've had the odd piece of chocolate or cappuccino or completely non-nourishing substance because the path is about freedom. Despite failing to rise to mainstream popularity during the quasi-mysticism trend of the 90s, a space occupied by New Age juggernauts like Deepak Chopra, she secured a loyal following reportedly numbering in the thousands. Her critics saw her as a dangerous charlatan whose teachings, if sincerely followed, would lead to inevitable tragedies. Cause but you'd her starve followers saw her as Reminder. a vessel of ancient forgotten knowledge, tasked with the duty of bringing about a shift in human consciousness There's in no time good way to see that you have tons of eye boogers than trying to put foundation under your eyes. It's obvious on the physical plane and it's obvious with <laughs> the physical bodies of mankind. We could end hunger for good, Jasmine Heath stated. <laughs> If only yes. we could reconnect to the alternate channels that offer freedom from physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual hungers. The first week of Jasmine Heen's 21-day Living on Light regimen, as detailed in her book, involved consuming nothing at all, solid or liquid. Or According liquid! According to the blogs of people who have attempted this protocol, extreme fatigue, kidney pain, and the sensation of their mouths feeling glued shut were common complaints within a few days of this initial phase. Because they're the starving to death. assurance that this was merely the old spirit leaving the body, that these were signs of breaking through, kept them motivated to continue. The following two weeks allowed for the reintroduction of small amounts of water and diluted juice, but no food. It was recommended instead to channel pranic nourishment through meditation. And simply saying, as the energy flows through you, feed me. Hmm? It's that simple. At the end of this 21-day initiation, individuals were promised a new body, recalibrated to feed from the universe's pranic cash. In addition to her books and website, Jasmine Heen would hold worldwide retreats, charging $1,500 for admittance, <laughs> a small price, she argued, in exchange for no longer requiring caloric intake. Religion all is all body, about taking the things know, that make you happy that and making sure you know that they make you go to hell. Strong, regenerative body, vital body, using body if you want that too, um, can come from prana, that this can be um, maintained from the divine force within. She's trying to get the all first of this. Jasmine Heen's followers to die light. from living on light was in 1997. Reports suggested Timo Deegan, a 31-year-old German kindergarten teacher, had discovered her he website, taught children! a colorful rabbit hole of promised enlightenment, and slipped into a coma after attempting the 21-day protocol. The second fatality was Australian Lonnie Morris. Under the tutelage of a Bertharian couple who were later found guilty of manslaughter, Lonnie Morris began to experience speech loss, paralysis, and eventual death after little more than a week into Jasmine Heen's living on life process. Little more than a week not eating! <laughs> like, that's a long time to die. Initiation, the Bertharian couple assured her was a spiritual pollutant that needed to be expelled. Jasmine Heen denied culpability. Perhaps they were not coming from a place of integrity and did not have the right motivation, she told the Sunday Times. But it was after the death of her third follower, a 49-year-old woman no idea what I'm doing. I'm about to open that the Australian media began to push Jasmine Heen to renounce living on light. I, I don't mean to belittle your, okay. your beliefs, and I'm sure they're sincerely held, but there is a woman <laughs> oh my God, it's the same line as a consequence of following your principles. It's the principles. same line. Along with a copy well, of Jasmine Heen's book, authorities found Verity Lynn's diary. 
The last <coughs> entry indicated Lynn didn't make it past the first week before collapsing of dehydration. She was discovered lying in a secluded moorland in northern Scotland by a passing fisherman. Jasmine Heen pointed out that in her book and on her website were disclaimers of personal accountability, including a checklist where aspirants were meant to self-assess their own eligibility based on physical, emotional, Are mental, and spiritual fitness. Are you able to not fitness. eat for a week and not Those die? Those who didn't meet such if criteria you're not, don't as do it. feeling the presence of the divine one within were discouraged from embarking okay. on living on light. I'm going to be doing be promoting that book, Abject this responsibility and this as my main, which should be with this as the dark, and I'm going to start here with the base. Like in now, an effort to quash Jazz Muheen's growing movement, I might the television into program this a 60 bit. Minutes issued her an opportunity to prove the legitimacy of her lifestyle broadcast to Australian viewers nationwide. I'm thinking this Jasmine in the corner, Hina agreed but I'm to a also seven day demonstration in, in which she would take we'll in no food or water, monitored by 24 hour surveillance, claiming it would be nothing more than a holiday. You wouldn't watch me die, I'd come out smiling and laughing, it'd be a holiday. And the controversial broadcast holiday. that followed would become a moment in breatharian history, referenced by both critics and advocates for decades to come. <laughs> Is that sweet street ad money? Get it, girl. This is the new Pat McGrath. I got this a couple months ago and I've only used it once because I've been too depressed to use my makeup, but I'm really sad about it. Don't you think you um, should leave it to the audience to decide and the people who bothered to do in depth research into what I'm actually saying to decide? What 60 Minutes was proposing nice. was a dangerous and very experiment, cheap but nothing Highly beyond what Jazz Muheen advocated the inside way to get the pages of Living on Light. But unlike those who had died attempting it, Jazz Muheen's progress would be attended by a physician who regularly monitored her vitals throughout the week. As they met Jazz Muheen in her home to escort her to the hotel where the experiment was to take place, she was asked about her refrigerator stocked with food. She claimed <laughs> most of it belonged to her partner, the carton of creamer she kept for tea in case they were guests. The experiment itself was short-lived. After day two without food or water, the physician began warning Jazz Muheen of signs of dehydration and elevated blood pressure. Jazz Muheen claimed the city's air and its pollutants were preventing her from properly feeding from her pranic source, so 60 Minutes relocated her to a more rural location. Her pulse continued to elevate, a sign of severe dehydration as well as a drop in blood pressure and weight loss of over 13 pounds. Despite her deteriorating physical state, Jasmuheen reported Yeah, no food or water. Spirits. It was Friday night. You started on Monday For night. For 21 days. None. None whatsoever. No, I'm not okay. allowed. How much food? No, I'm not allowed. How are you feeling? I feel really good now. I'm here. After day four, the she physician estimated great. Jasmine Heen was experiencing around 11% dehydration. Her pulse had doubled since the beginning of the experiment. I didn't know the dehydration was and she was at risk I don't know for kidney means. failure. It was recommended that 60 minutes bring everything to a halt, yeah, to which they agreed. It's too dangerous to continue? Very much so. Too dangerous to continue. 60 minutes would be culpable if they encouraged her to continue. The decision to end the demonstration was a divisive one. Many saw it as a clear debunking of living on light. If a veteran breatharian such as Jazz Muheen couldn't withstand week one, how could anyone be expected to survive okay. it? Jazz Muheen was maligned can you hear in the me? press. Wait, she was even yes, awarded the Ig Nobel Prize, a parody Nobel of the Prize. Nobel Prize meant to satirize unscientific research. Other recipients include Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard and fellow New Age guru Deepak Chopra for his liberal interpretation of quantum physics. But followers of Jazz Muheen's brand of breatharianism argued that by really ending the experiment assault. early, 60 minutes had disproved nothing. The dehydration, the quickened heart rate they claimed, were normal and expected aspects of her 21-day process. I see no reason why Jazz Muheen should not have passed the test, wrote filmmaker and breatharian <laughs> advocate P.A. Straubinger, but it was stopped by the 60 Minutes team who wanted to prove their story. Jazz Muheen's momentum in the fringe spiritual movement was slowed but not halted. Her presence persisted well into the ensuing decades, cited by many contemporary breatharians such as Navina Shine as being the authority on this way of life. A very exciting thing happened for me yesterday. Uh, I managed to catch Jasmuheen before she went off on her tour. Jasmuheen lives in Australia and she's kind of the, um, the guru, uh, the authority on living on light. Breatharian is, she's been a breatharian for many years now and so 
you know, she lives, she lives breatharianism. Although Jazz Mohin knew the results of such experiments when taken too far, she had Skyped with Navina to offer her encouragement, even promoting Navina's YouTube channel from her own Facebook page. But despite the clear influence, Navina Shine's version of Living on Light was her own, one which thankfully did not require her to abstain from drinking water. In fact, by the end of the third week of her experiment, the amount of water Navina was consuming was making her ill. I've been having a bit of difficulty with drinking water. I just drink water and tea now. I let go of the coffee after a few days because it was upsetting my stomach. But the water seems to have been doing that. I realized that one of the things that was going on, I think I might have been drinking too much water because I just kept drinking water, drinking water, drinking water. Like Jazz Muheen and other breatharians who came after, Navina could only offer an ambiguous explanation for what she intended to use as sustenance. Her use of the term light, she admitted, was a metaphor for an indescribable force. We don't yet know if it's actually light, or if the nourishment is coming from the air, or the sun, or from somewhere else. Her daily routine included exercising, reading, and attempting to master the mind-body connection she believed would allow her to yeah, access this form of supernatural nourishment, yeah, all without leaving her house for the duration of the experiment. She had originally intended to offer her spectators a 24-hour live stream, captured by cameras placed in all eight rooms of her home, a venture she disclosed put her in significant credit card debt. You'll be able to see every moment, every moment of every day or night, from or anywhere night. in the world, just by tuning into the internet live stream, livingonlight.co, for as long or as little as you like. You can just check in and see, is she eating, or is she not? But Navina had overestimated her Twitch. technical and financial ability to host a continuous live stream on her oh own no. website. And by the third week, she seemed reluctant to promise that it would ever operate as advertised. Naturally, this diminished her credibility. But based on her appearance as the weeks progressed, many speculated she was either not eating at all or eating very little. By day 21, Navina reported to have lost 21 pounds, averaging a pound per day since she'd started. Feeling this was sufficient, she instructed her weight to begin maintaining itself. I told my body that it's time to stop losing the weight now. It can kind of taper it off and start stabilizing. And well, in my experience, that shit the body out. usually does what you ask it to do, if you ask nicely. Following Jasmuheen's public endorsement, Navina began attracting attention. When a local news team arrived at her home for a profile, Navina spoke with them optimistically about her experiment, although her physical state appeared questionable. I'm actually feeling the need soon to like sit down because I'm beginning to... Um... This ends yeah, with this I woman dying, right? Like, she does not make it to the end of this video. The cameras off for a minute. Oh, shit, Despite son, the technical up? setbacks with the live stream, she continued to film herself to create a record of evidence in the event she was successful. Every watching a woman starve herself to death this planet would have sufficient to prove God's evidence real. for them individually to say, yes, this happened. Navina offered assurance that she was lucid enough to stop if she felt she was truly in danger of starving. When asked in an interview what she thought of the deaths of previous breatharians, Navina stated, I don't know why they didn't notice they were dying, and I don't <laughs> know why they didn't do anything about it. But at the end of Fucking week five, idiots. Navina acknowledged That's she was approaching comment. the eight-week window where the prisoners in the Belfast hunger strikes began to pass away, and she intended to go at least 100 days, well beyond the point anyone had survived. Most of her audience continued to ask her to stop the experiment. That's Several fair. commented that they would be reporting the channel for violating YouTube's guidelines regarding self-injury. Yes! I hear lots of criticism that's coming in. I've heard about it at least. It's my uh, strongly held belief I don't have to eat. Myself, because I'm thick unto, this is suicide and I'm, is everybody going to come to my funeral? Right? So. But there was a small but ever-present band of fellow else, mystics cheering Navina on, proving the movement of breatharianism was alive and well. Although breatharianism is largely attributed to Jazz Muheen, Ellen Grieve was only responsible for resurrecting it. Throughout the 1980s, the Breatharian movement was founded, popularized, and swiftly discredited by an enigmatic figure known as Wiley Brooks. Oh, this show is way back.
I want to do my part to reduce food waste. That's why I feel great about shopping with Imperfect Foods. They, they feel great about having people ship and individually package all this food the to them because, because they don't understand right that food waste right is already like not a real thing and, and ugly fruits are the fruits that are then sold to companies to make jams, ugly meats become hot dogs. We don't have this weird amount of food we're throwing away because the tomatoes aren't cute. We find ways to use those tomatoes for things like cans of tomato paste. Like you... You just feel good with that, and like it infuriates me. It on. absolutely infuriates me because they do. They, it's, it's like when you say, like when you pray for somebody, which makes you feel good, so then you don't like donate to actual charity or like volunteer for the homeless because you feel good already. So you don't do real shit because you already feel Bertharian good. That's what that imperfect gesture is. Bean often claim that the movement yeah, a food has ad, right? Please back eat. thousands of years, I'm gummy originating vitamins. from the yogis of ancient India. But it's difficult to find usage of the term breatharianism prior to 1972. In a book titled Dick Gregory's Natural Diet for Folks Who Eat, civil and animal for folks rights who eat, activist unlike... Dick Gregory wrote about a continuum of food consciousness. With showing no food restraint whatsoever on one end, restrictive diets such as vegetarianism somewhere in the middle, and breatharianism eating nothing at all at the other end. The Breatharian movement is not often attributed to Dick Gregory due to his likely satirical use of the word, but the term, oh along with many of its modern principles, was later popularized by it's a like smooth spoken man from California. It's like if there was a part of the Republican Wiley faction Brooks that was like, Thomas Paine was right, he should eat baby. On a TV show titled That's Incredible, Wiley, a gangly man of 130 pounds, was showcased lifting nearly 10 times his body weight. His secret, he said, was that he hadn't eaten anything in 17 years. Holy you have it shit! For 17 you are a liar! Years. Not a sandwich, a hamburger, hot dog, pretzel, a piece of roast beef, fish, vegetables, nothing for 17 years. Right. Well, let me explain what breatharianism is first, okay. if I might. Breatharianism But you is, haven't eaten for 17 yes, years, right, as we know it. Right. Okay. I don't eat, yes. As Wiley explained, he was once overweight, mindlessly consuming what he referred to as the typical American diet. In pursuit of slowing the aging process and becoming healthier, he stated he began moving through the food continuum, with regular fasting as advocated in Dick Gregory's book until reaching breatharianism. Although Wiley did not invent the concept of breatharianism, the specifics of the lifestyle, how to achieve it, and how to maintain it were left for Wiley to create. Wiley fleshed out the tenets of the movement during his 12-hour seminars, or what he called intensives, and to the 4,000 people who paid to watch him speak, Wiley's message was this, stop eating and start living. All of the constituents that we need is taken from the air we breathe. And the fact All is, the there is only one thing that keeps the human body alive, and that is breathing. Wiley's doctrine was solidified like in a book be more he co-authored with fellow New Age dietitian Nancy Foss, which they titled Breatharianism, Breathe and Live Forever. Is With that the Tiffany Trump? Line, the healthy diet for eternal beauty, the book attempted to intersect both the fad diet craze and the spiritualism craze of the 1980s, two booming movements which became notorious for preying on the gullible. When man reaches his perfect state of health and natural state of being, chapter one begins, he will be in perfect harmony with his creator and require no foods, water, or sleep. Those who read past such a first sentence were lectured about the poisons of food and how it was responsible for the negative effects of aging. All of the things we've heard about, we must get old and we must get weak. And I think I heard when I was a younger person that a man is twice a child and once a man. And that is not the case. When a person gets older and wiser, he should get younger. But if achieving the lifestyle were as simple as not eating, it would have been a short book. So like the Bartharian theologies that came after, Wiley detailed a transitional period. A full decade before Jazz Moheen's infamous 21-day process, there was Wiley's Yellow Foods Diet. 14 yellow foods such as eggs, corn, and rum raisin ice cream from haagen were meant to purify the blood of rum, poison before raisin, one could mature Hagen-Dazs. into a Bartharian. Although Wiley never fully explained the significance of the color yellow, He claimed it was based on its vibrational frequency, which was designed to cleanse and detoxify the body. Before we even get started, our blood is poisoned. You see, we already start at a disadvantage when we're born. 
Other lifestyle changes which were required to so complete the transformation, such as never drinking water alone and only sleeping while facing north, also seemed to need no further explanation. Wiley's following was smaller than what Jazz Mohin would cultivate in the 90s, but his brand of breatharianism managed to ensnare a young actress whose career was just blossoming. Michelle Pfeiffer had fallen in with a group of aspiring Hollywood breatharians in the early 80s. What? She later told the Huffington Post, they were very controlling. I wasn't living with them, but I was there a lot, and they were always telling me I needed to come more. I had to pay for all the time I was there, so it was financially I'm so very sure. draining. As she helped her husband, actor and director Peter Horton research her role for a movie about a South Korean cult, she began to realize she was part of a cult herself. Honestly proud Wiley's of her. Wiley's movement had experienced a few years of unlikely success. But his time in the New Age limelight would be short-lived. Just three years after his debut, Wiley's secret habits would be exposed by his followers, sending breatharianism into a decade of humiliated silence. Where they should have stayed. Humiliated silence is a beautiful, underrated thing. First, you must kick the right. Good for computer. Michelle Pfeiffer. You see what we've done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wiley's growing organization had hinged on the promise that he hadn't eaten in 17 Her husband's years. Her husband's like, uh, a claim he'd repeatedly babe, made. Why don't you help me do some lectures. research? But for in this 1983, movie. with breatharianism still in its infancy, Wiley was outed by a breatharian member for quote sneaking junk food into his room after everyone was asleep. He'll eat a dozen donuts in a sitting, said former breatharian Lavelle Leffler, who claimed to have first caught Wiley eating an omelet. When she didn't react, Leffler stated he began eating around her more often. Wiley's response to the allegations varied. To one newspaper, he said of Leffler, we were romantically involved. We broke up, now she's out for revenge. To another, he claimed Leffler was upset over having recently been banned from the breatharian institution after being caught stealing. But other members began coming forward, saying they witnessed Wiley emerging from a 7-Eleven with a bag of groceries and later seeing the empty food containers in his hotel trash can. Oh Modern constituents such as Jazz Muheen would later attempt to exonerate him by speculating that the food was for <laughs> someone else. He was seen coming out of a 7-Eleven McDonald's because he was traveling with a group of people who ate. But the damage to Wiley's reputation was irreparable. Despite assuring his followers that the movement did not depend on whether he, its founder, ate or not, breatharianism suffered a critical blow. And when breatharianism found its second wind nearly 15 years later, Wiley found he had no place in it. If you look out into the world, you'll see all kinds of breatharians, but you probably won't see me, Wiley said in a 2013 interview. I don't get invited to places to talk. I don't get Although very little from Wiley's doctrines have endured the modern evolutions of breatharianism, which mostly omit Wiley's promises of immortality, ability to go without sleep, and his yellow foods transitional period, there are components of his green. early teachings that have persisted throughout the decades. Eating is an acquired habit just like drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes. As epitomized in Wiley's yeah, catchphrase, and it's food and is addictive more addictive than heroin. The notion that human consciousness is meant to evolve beyond the need for food, and that eating is merely an addiction, with hunger being analogous to drug withdrawal, appears in many current versions of the movement. The unique power of the human mind to transcend its own biology and will itself to live without food has also been a foundational belief since the beginning. We read that the hunger strikers in Belfast died. Right. You oh, it won't. It's like a dark a, olive. A difference. The difference is, very importantly, they wanted to die. Similar they assertions were stated in Avina Shine's videos. If her body began to shut down, she seemed to think that it wouldn't be the lack of food that would cause her to die, <laughs> but the belief that she would die. Categorizing the death as more of a self-fulfilling prophecy than a biological inevitability. And like Wiley's early claims, she believed humanity's dependence on food was meant to be grown out of, comparing her own living on light experiment to cutting the umbilical cord. And when the umbilical cord is cut, it's terrifying for the baby. But as Navina continued terrifying. into the second month of her experiment, her enthusiasm was clearly waning. Her video diaries, once teeming with promises of changing the world, began to show struggles with self-doubt. I have no idea if I'm living on light or not. I could be starving to death. <laughs> it's really hard to tell the difference. I have no agenda about being right about this. 
I would love it to be true. I would love that humanity had this tool That's that could possibly thing. save millions of lives and billions of dollars yes. and keep our planet healthy. If it's not true, so what? If it so is what? true, people have oh died, my Linda. God, how incredible is that? Criticism remained the majority of Navina's audience response well into the sixth week of living on light, with much of it unsparing. But Navina had yet to be decided.